Night Attack is coming to SF Sketchfest next week, January 22nd, 8 p.m. at Piano Fight. Find out uh, more information at sfsketchfest.com. Special guests, Anthony Carboni, Rebecca Watson, and Veronica Belmont. sfsketchfest.com. Let's start the show! Oh, hell yeah! Live from Orlando, Florida, in the middle of a Ford Expedition, outside of the freaking cabin that our family is vacationing in. I'm Brian Rushwood, joined as always by my BFF and OAK, it's J-R-Y, Justin Robert Young. What is up? 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 Oh my God, Brian. Uh, a lot. A lot's up, man. A lot's happened. You've been all over the place. You're in you're in Orlando and uh, we got SF Sketchfest coming up. Uh, have we have we decided uh, whether or not uh, it is our next episode or or two episodes from now? Do we even know? I think all things being equal, we should do a regular Tuesday night episode. And uh, the big question is how do we how do we do a Tuesday night episode and then do a live show the Wednesday night after? And uh, I I don't know how much it's going to cost, but but my gut says we should come out and do it live in your studio. Is 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 that available? I mean, it certainly can be, uh, uh, Brian. It with 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 belief in God, all things are possible. Okay, yeah, I am. I'm going to assume by God you mean Patreon.com/slash Night Attack, <laughs> and I do believe in Patreon.com/slash Night Attack. Uh, uh, so yeah, we'll figure it out. Here's what you need to know, though. If you are in the Bay Area. If you're anywhere in California, really, then you got to come on out. Uh, San Francisco, Wednesday night, the historic Piano Fight Theater. Uh, uh, we're doing a live show, our first ever SF Sketch Fest performance. Tickets are cheap, 20 bucks. Uh, uh, please, this is the time that you got to show out for us because uh, it is it is going to be an absolute blast. Carboni's going to be live on the show. Uh, Belmont, who doesn't really even do podcast shit anymore. She's coming out of retirement. And Rebecca Watson making her Night Attack debut. It's going to be a fucking blast. Dude, have we decided, like, what kind of game we're going to play? Because, number one, we know that Veronica Belmont, highly competitive. Number two, we know that if she's coming out of retirement, not to say that she's in retirement, but the point is, if she's going to show up live on stage to do a comedy podcast, we got to have something worthy of, 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 of her talents. Yes, uh, and by that I'm going to take uh, that you mean we need to trigger Veronica Belmont into having a live conniption fit on stage for <laughs> the entertainment of us and all of us best crowd. Our dynamic has persistently been, for going on 10 years now, you wanting to figure out how to trigger Veronica Belmont and me <laughs> as the big brother trying to stop that from happening. <laughs> well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out next uh, next <laughs> week. Come on. And uh, uh, see the show. It is going to be a blast. And even though I am in the middle of dry January, I have gotten a 24-hour indulgence. I bought it from the Pope himself uh, uh, to to make sure that we that we have a proper night attack live on stage. So so there we go. Go get those tickets. If you were in the area, you are not going to want to miss it. But Brian, yes. Uh, uh, we know historically you've loved broadcasting out of Ford automobiles. Uh, uh, we, uh, that, sure. that you've done from various different uh, uh, front seats of, 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 of Ford vehicles. However, uh, this is because you are in Orlando, you are on vacation, and what we don't know, the listener does not know, is how you got from where you were last week which was not having any uh, hotel reservations, not having any passes to Disney World, but you had already promised your three children you were going to. The plan was for Brian, in his most daring hey boss of all time, to just land in Orlando 48 hours from when we spoke to you and just conjure up an entire vacation. And if I might build it up, dare a few degrees further, the next day after we were done recording, there was a a, a Twitter uh, a, a story, a New York Times story that was sweeping Twitter, all about how the way that you can have the best vacation is to meticulously plan every square inch of it, uh, which which it, it, uh, did nothing 
but but add more fuel to this fire. The internet needs to know, Brian, where indeed is this Ford Explorer? Is it outside of Gator World? Are you in Clearwater? Are you in Orlando? Where the hell are you? Okay, first of all, it's Ford Expedition. Thank you for asking. Second of all, that article is total bullshit because I'd rather put a fucking bullet in my head than have every moment of a fucking vacation planned. But here's the most important part. I'm glad you brought this up, Justin. Okay. Because to answer your question, we have to go back 20 years. 1999. Oh, fuck. Bonnie and I write a list of things that we want to do before we die. Crazy stuff, esoteric stuff, hug a redwood, uh, freaking, you've seen this list, by the way. Do you yeah. Buy a Jeep yeah. Wrangler was on this list. It was. Do you remember other stuff? Uh, I do, actually, because uh, this list, I guess, uh, I'm presuming that the list initially was just on a piece of paper. It has since been made into an artistic installation because Bonnie is an amazing artist and it sits in the most regal of real estate in Brian's house, the downstairs guest shitter, uh, yes. which I have, which I have seen many, many a time in my friendship with Brian Rushford. So indeed I have studied the list uh, of, I think play a round of golf with my dad is on yep. there. Uh, I, 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 I go and appear on the tonight show, like, like, like heavy duty stuff. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it is checked off, to your credit. There is a lot of stuff on there that uh, uh, has been uh, uh, eliminated. But, uh, Brian, I, I, I don't know how this fits into the fact that you're a derelict father who refused to make plans for your family. Okay, hold on. Stick with me. One of the items on there was have lunch with John Stossel. Uh, there may be people who are tuning in for the first time who don't know who John Stossel is or why this would be on our list. Would you do our best version of, of bringing them up to speed? A lot of people think that <laughs> some television anchor, maybe he was on 2020. I went into my own memory banks and remembered that I am a award-winning journalist, somebody that's won many Emmys, and at one time was hit in the face by a wrestler. I'm John Stossel, a award-winning journalist who has gone on to embrace my political side and make a, an entire second act of my career in pointing out the facts about libertarian philosophy and free markets. Yes, all of those. Uh, for me... John Stossel represented an entry vector to libertarianism, but for other people, he was an entry vector to skepticism. Like I, I, as we uh, often, you know, with 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 a wry smile, point out, you know, James, you know, he was people one of the people that brought James Randi to everybody's attention and all that stuff. But full confession time on that list of a hundred things to do before I die is have you know, have lunch with John Stossel, right? This is the fantasy, the idea 20 years ago in the late 90s, as I'm entering my adulthood, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to have lunch with this guy sometime. New story. This also is probably news to people who don't listen to the after show, people who aren't patrons at patreon.com slash night attack, people who have only listened to the main show. In the after show, we had your friend of mine, Andrew Heaton, who is staying on campus at the Seven Acres Wood, mm -hmm. and he mentioned a story that he happened to have John Stossel's Emmy. Yes, and, and if I remember correctly, uh, this is kind of a bit for John Stossel because he has, uh, a, I think, safe to say a bit of a, a low idea of the Emmy uh, uh, system and he, he kind of feels like it's a lot of uh, people of the same ilk rewarding each other and so they pass around hardware so everybody feels better and yes he is an excellent journalist yes he has racked up a ton of hardware uh and so as an act of punk rock self-indulgence what he does is he likes to as kind of a stunt hand out emmys now the difference is that he often hands out regional emmys 
regional Emmys. He has a lot of, but he's also won the real deal national Emmys. And when Heaton was leaving Fox business, he asked, he just made the audacious ask of, Hey, I hear you hand out Emmys and Stossel in, in my mind, uh, Heaton's retelling was Stossel just kind of absentmindedly said, eh, whatever. And just grabbed the nearest Emmy to him and handed it to Heaton. Heaton walks off and then realizes this is not a regional one. This is, this is a big deal, big boy, top of the pops national Emmy. Right. So he tells us this story in the after show. And, and I don't know that he quite grasps just how amazed uh, certainly I am. And, and I think you are as well. Indeed, and, indeed. and, and uh, I, I try to very carefully tread as I say, um, Hey, where is it right now? He's like, I don't know, in a box in storage. And I try to explain, well, would you like us to be stewards of it <laughs> that we can keep it on display that we can put up a little placard that says on loan from Andrew Heaton. This is the Emmy that the, John Stossel won for whatever. And he was like, ha ha, good story. Anyway, I'm going to go back to living rent free in your HQ. And then uh, <laughs> flash forward to, uh, I guess, what, just over a month ago, or maybe two or three weeks ago, um, Andrew Heaton finally decides where he wants to move to. And uh, he he announces his plans and lets me know, hey, man, thank you for the place to crash. This has been great. It's been fun to appear on all your shows and everything. I'm going to head on out. This is going to be the day. And I'm like, great. Uh, the day before that, I show up and he, he mentions offhandedly that, um, hey, uh, you, you, you want to hang out for a bit? We can do a do a, you know, whiskey tipple or whatever. And uh, he's like, oh, also, I have a gift for you. And he disappears and comes back with a towel draped over his arm. Okay. And uh, and hands the, his phone to John Riel, who is there, and, uh, and says, hey, will you take a picture of this? And I'm thinking, like, okay, it's going to be a thing. He's got a sweet thing or whatever. And then uh, he whips off this towel and shows me an Emmy and says, Brian, Thank you for putting me up for the last uh, half year in this establishment. Here's John Stossel's Emmy. And I tweeted out my response. I don't know if we have that. But, uh, but, but uh, suffice to say, of all the things that I thought were underneath that towel, John Stossel's Emmy, I did not suspect would be among them. And this, this is a prime time Emmy. Like, this is for real big deal hardware that Bryce is now showing <laughs> <laughs> like a QVC model. He's showing it off like a QVC bit. <laughs> He's hand modeling this. Bryce, can you tell what year it's from? This is it. He's He's running back over. No, oh I cannot. It's it's, 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 it's not Emmy. engraved in any way. Okay, yeah, but but there it is, man, for all to see and and Bryce, it, it, it is it it's heavy, right? He's running back. We're, we're making this work. Uh, it's a good weight. It's a good little weight. It's, it's got it's got a heft. It's got a heft to it. Yeah, it's got some heft to that. Uh, so, just just amazing, just insane. So here's the important part: is suddenly, to my absolute amazement, like he's full on handing us, and he phrased it as a gift. In my heart, it will always be. It will always belong to Andrew Heaton. <laughs> strangely not John Stossel but 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 we are merely stewards of it <laughs> that we're yeah. holding on to but number one Justin I'll be goddamned if having an Emmy doesn't class up a place <laughs> it's pretty great to have an Emmy just sort of sitting around I mean look it's no golden play button but as far as <laughs> reward you know it certainly takes <laughs> takes things up a little bit of a notch now Brian amazing story uh a uh, I'm still not quite seeing the connection to where you are physically in the state of Florida right now. Okay, so uh, I, we get the Emmy. We t I tweeted out saying, hey, this is a real thing. That's a real Emmy. There's a real story. 
last week we do the show, a bunch of people in the chat saying, hey, what's the story with the Emmy? We don't get time to talk about it. We don't talk about it. Long story short, it's John Stossel's Emmy. John Stossel is important to me because he's the person who did the journalism that brought me to libertarianism. One of my all-time heroes of all time, literally on my list of 100 things to do before I die, is have lunch with John Stossel. New story. A week ago, we wrapped up this very show with yeah. me <laughs> sort of shrugging my shoulders like, eh, we'll figure out. I got tickets to Florida. We'll figure out something, and the yeah. kids will be happy. Yeah. Um, I did... The day we left, find out that there were last minute cancellations and we're staying at Fort Wilderness in the Disney properties. Fort Wilderness, super dope. A uh, bunch of bunch of single rope wide trailers. Uh, everybody has their own place. It's Which is great. It's so funny because uh, as I uh, we were texting actually while you were flying, that was where me, my mom took me and my brother. Uh, when when we were kids to go to Disney was Fort Wilderness because it was always a little bit cheaper than doing the like hotels and because you could do one cabin and that would basically so you'd pay about what you would cost for like a, a bigger hotel room for one cabin and so that way the whole family could go and, and stay in one area you could get your own groceries so it was just a little cheaper than buying everything out of the hotel. But yeah, no, I have so many fond memories of Fort Wilderness uh, as as a child going there. Dude, it's super freaking dope. I don't think I'm going to stay anywhere else because you get your own kitchen, you get your own uh, uh, main bedroom, and 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 I'm snoring it up and on the couch in the main room and stuff. Uh, it's awesome. Um, also, uh, wow, wow, wow. Uh, uh, am I teaching Penny a lot of driving stuff uh, in, in in a golf cart? It's pretty great. Uh, but so, so we get that figured out, and it's like, okay, what are we going to do for the place? So we hop, we go to the airport, we check in, we do a lot of things very smart. Uh, we still have the, the, what, the clear, right? So we're able to skip the line. There's, you know, it's a low travel time, perfect time of the year to do this. Uh, we get to the gate, and the kids are fed, everything's situated, and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to phrase this part. I'm sitting there after situating the kids. Bonnie is annoyed and upset and kerfluffled, and she's in the middle of dealing with some stuff. Penny has announced that she will not leave her iPad not charging, but she has to go to the bathroom. So she announces that I have to watch her stuff. And I'm like, I gotta watch your stuff. Arr! Why don't you take your stuff with her? And she goes, it needs to charge. You know, as a 15 year, year old would do. Yep. And so I'm sitting there standing vigil over Penelope's iPad that is charging. And I'll be good goddamn, Justin, if out of the corner of my eye, I don't see walking down the main thoroughfare of the Austin, Austin Bergstrom uh, International Airport motherfucking John Stossel is walking down. And so I say, I, I, to my amazement, and not with my hold own body's on, permission. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get to what you yelled, you have been in that airport probably more than 99% of humanity, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you traveled for a living. That's your home base. Whenever you are, whenever you have a relationship with an airport for business travel. Yes. Begin to notice and know things that others would miss, right? Patterns of traffic, uh, uh, certain artwork, right? You 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 just you just know that area, right? So you are flying out of a Southwest gate, something that you've probably sat at a billion different times. Yes. At what point do you notice the John Stossel esque figure in the distance? And how long between you recognizing it and you being absolutely sure that you need to yell for this person that you are now sure is John Stossel? I think quite honestly, I, I look, I, I happen to be looking up in the 1, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, four seconds of John Stossel walking with his carry-on across my field of vision. And 
totally unbidden, out of my mouth come the words, John Stossel? Without breaking his stride. Yeah. Actual John Stossel looks over and says, yeah. And the next words, totally unbidden from my mouth. At some point, my my amygdala, my lizard brain takes over and just shouts, I have your Emmy. (laughs) (laughs) At which point, John Stossel slows down but does not stop and again nods as if to say, yeah, kid, a lot of people do. Yeah. (laughs) continuing to walk forward and then i say i say andrew heaton gave it to me at which point he stops so <laughs> are, I, now are you yelling this from the charging ipad yes i am yes i am so at this point imagine brian as as one of those characters that has one foot on each ship Right, and he is slowly <laughs> having his legs split apart because, on one hand, an angry fifteen-year-old and the mama bear to back her up. On the other <laughs> hand, John Stossel is in the Austin <laughs> International Airport. Yes, yes. So, so first I shout John Stossel, and he's like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "I have your Emmys, like a lot of kids do." And then he's, and then I say, "Andrew Heaton gave it to me," and then he slows down, and I run up, and he says. If I remember correctly, and keep in mind, memory is valuable. All this could be wrong. But in my imagination, I remember him saying, why did he give it to you? (laughs) 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 And then... Uh, So here we go. We are now seeing a picture. John Stossel, indeed, a bit of tussled hair. Uh, uh, for 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 Stasi, uh, uh, the the tie a little loose. And now, do you think that he was was he going to his flight or leaving a flight? I think he was catching a flight. I, if I were to guess, uh, in fact, uh, from the direction, almost certainly he came in the main gate and he was headed to his his you know flight gate or whatever. Um, so so at that point. He uh, he slows down and and there's a brief exchange about like uh, oh I do a comedy podcast and Andrew Heaton's a friend and blah 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 and and he says uh, do you do you want to record a video for Andrew and I and and to which I say uh, yeah sure but can I get a selfie and he's like yeah of course and we do a selfie and I'm like oh thank you so much such a fan such a fan and then I go to leave and he's like yeah but can we record a video for Heaton. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I'm like, sure, yeah, of course, yeah. of course we can. Yes, let's record a video. So we record a video. Now hold and- up, <laughs> because this is where I come in. <laughs> sitting, minding my own goddamn business on a Friday afternoon, when all of a sudden my friend Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Friends, it is indeed the video that you are about to see. So imagine you have no context for anything. You have not seen this picture of John Stossel and Brian Brushwood. All you get is this video from the Austin airport. Just out of nowhere, you get this video. You gave my fucking Emmy away? He was supposed to go impress Glenn Beck. He said he wanted it, and now it's just being passed around to utter strangers. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. So all I see is hit the button. Is there John Stossel yelling at me, and I'm like, Brian's cackling next to him. I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. I will now read the statum <laughs> what I uh, what what I what I said to Brian, which was, what the fuck is happening? B B D B N S. What the fuck is happening? Answers now. <laughs> Play, play it again, play it again, Bryce. You gave my fucking Emmy away? That oh, happens. He was supposed to go impress Glenn Beck. He said he wanted it, and now it's just being passed around to utter strangers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
I know this is going to sound really stupid, Brian. But the best part about the video to me is that he really does the voice. <laughs> and that was my thought. My thought was, oh my God, he actually talks like John Stossel. You gave my fucking Emmy away? Why would you do that? It was, Glenn Beck wanted it, and now you're passing it around to total strangers. I'm the one. It's, it, and now it's going around to total strangers. <laughs> At the moment, just the sentence structure. I was, it was there to go to Glenn Beck, and now <gasps> passed around to total <sighs> stranger. <laughs> James Randy told me that he'd rather have the Emmy. <laughs> oh my God, that is that is that is uh, 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 amazing. Uh, uh, what what a chance encounter! So you left the iPad. Uh, oh yeah. Of did, course, no, no, that, th there was, okay, oh, this is the best part. I went and had this whole exchange. It took uh, uh, 45 seconds, as you would imagine. Yeah. Uh, Penny was off in the bathroom. I abandoned her iPad. I figured, screw it, so, free iPad for anybody who wants it. Uh, I came back, and poor Bonnie was, like, in full wrangling cat's mom mode. And, and I was like, hey, Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie. She's like, where were you? And I was like, you, you, you need to see this. And she is like, do I? Because keep in mind, this is coming from the guy who's about to show her like bikey wars for the 12th time or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 back here, wait, hold on, go to Bryce. Bryce, how much weight does Brian saying you need to see this have? <laughs> <laughs> Brian is around on a regular basis. I think it was a week or two ago where after one of the shows he spent, uh, how long was it? An hour and a half or two with John watching all of Infinity Train, making him watch yes, all yes. of Infinity Train here in the office. <laughs> Brian, Brian is notorious for we need to watch. There is no length of video that Brian doesn't want to watch on his phone with you. I'll stop and watch it right now. I can watch it all right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Famous word for Brian Brusher. So I can only imagine, only imagine how much Bonnie gets this and how much she's already cheesed off with you. And then you're rolling in with like, oh, no, no, no. you have to understand these magic beans. I <laughs> so, so I say this and I show her the first picture and her face is just like even more annoyed she, because in her mind, she's like, you went and found a guy that looks vaguely like John Stossel to take a picture <laughs> with. <laughs> and then and then uh, and then I, I go on to play more and then I eventually I play the video and she's like, what is happening? And then I look her right in the eye and I'm like, in the past minute, I met my hero John Stossel and we recorded this together. And then she just pauses like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, here's what I need is permission. Number one, uh, two observations. Number one, uh, do I have permission to check that off my 100? It, it's not quite a lunch with Don John Stossel, but having John Stossel's Emmy and rubbing it in his face in the airport, eh, that counts, right? I, I would say you can check it off the list. However, we all know what really this is about, and that is... Now you have the in. Now you're a known quantity to John Sossel. You're the guy that he ran into at the Austin airport that knows Heaton. You know he has a joking relationship with Heaton. So basically you are just, uh, you, are, you are now cajoling Heaton to go to New York away from actually having lunch with John Sossel. So I would say check it off if you want, but, but the real... The real step forward is now that that you are you are ever closer, just closer around the corner. Yeah. Okay, second question. Um, legitimately, we could say that of everybody in the Brushwood Clan headed off to Disney for an exciting week of vacation. Fair to say that before we even left, Brian met his favorite character. Brian, this was. <laughs> The Brian Brushwood adult man. In fact, you were really only like uh, uh, the, the accoutrement would only have to be you being sat down and given your favorite food and being served, uh, being served a beer 
and then have John Stossel come out to really recreate the character breakfast setting that that children get at <laughs> when they are given their favorite breakfast food, and then Mickey and Minnie and Elsa come out to uh, uh, meet and greet. You will hell's yeah. That because in fact I would say for for if a child finds breakfast with all the syrup they want to be magical yet familiar john stossel showing up at what is essentially your place of business the austin <laughs> international airport is both familiar and magical to you so i would say that indeed is the case in fact it's the kind of magic that can only be replicated when you contribute to our patreon patreon.com slash night attack Hells to the yes. If you go to patreon.com slash night attack, you can contribute to, I don't know, a dollar an episode, maybe a little bit more than that. But the most important thing is that normally this is the part of the show where we shout out people who are a new patron or somebody who has increased their pledge. But guess what? I'm looking at an iPad and an iPhone and I don't have access to any of that stuff. Also, real quick, I do want to give, I, I, I'll tell you what, I, I will give two named shout outs to people who have made this vacation incredible. We have two people who are involved in the Disney ecosystem. Uh, hats off to Mark Hartwell, who was there for Big Diz, and also Zach Holder, who was there for Big Diz, because uh, they flexed some of their incredible muscle to help make the Hey Bossening of 2020 possible. Thank you to everybody uh, who pledges. Thank you to everybody who's a friend and fan of the show. You guys are making miracles come true. Night Attack, or sorry, patreon.com slash night attack is the place for all of that. And thank you to all of the individual members of our beautiful, beautiful chat room. Indeed, of course. You can always watch us live here at twitch.tv slash night attack. And for one solid minute, we like to shout out the folks that are giving uh, uh, giving their bits, giving their, uh, giving their subs, just making sure that we continue to keep to the roots of this program, a live streamed moment and a totally unrelated story. Hey, Brian. Now yes. I know that you know that I live by a, by a motto internally called steal the win. Yeah, man. I, I, I hear it's an offshoot of the sun bun ethos as it's called. I indeed, Brian. And when I see you acting the way you are, lacking the ability to steal the win, I get a little concerned. Well, I mean, uh, look, uh, uh, the Lenina once said, he who fails to hey boss a night is a true degenerate. Well, I mean, uh, that, that might be a little Milo Mallow, as my grandfather used to say. <laughs> he was having a stroke and cut <laughs> your blood pressure. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, look, uh, not to talk ill of, of, of your grandfather, but, I mean, he was a real biocal, am I right? Well, uh, you know, when, when, when your name is Mr. Bruick like mine, maybe you can have a, a, a saying as well. Yeah, well, I haven't just filled out a DSA-89 with my signature in triplicate for nothing, buddy. Yep, it's this kind of improv that's going to be on the stage at SF Sketchfest, bitches! Go hey, man. That out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I do want to shout out our bit boss right bit here boss. on the program, or at least I would if this hype train thing would get out so of my Twitch, way. So Twitch Hells, unlocked this yeah. new thing called the hype train where when everyone subscribes all at once, it gives people free emotes and stuff, but it also blocks up the thing where we can see the bit boss, so we can't see it just yet. <laughs> all right, so we will shout out the bit boss in a, in a second, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and bring on our guests. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is an, an awesome, awesome tandem. Uh, J.F. Dubow is uh, an awesome author. He's been in, in the Diamond Club ecosystem for a while. And Amy Frost not only is a fantastic podcaster, but she is the season one winner of America's Next Top Podcaster, the uh, podcast reality show for which... I'm the dickhead judge. So she had to deal with me being mean to her for, for many successive weeks. They got a brand new show, but let's welcome them on. JF and Amy, welcome to the program. Hello. Dude, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, uh, true fact, look, I, I, I've got a lot of podcasts in my feed. I love Justin Like a Brother. Apologies, I haven't listened to it. If you're going to summarize your experience on America's Next Top Podcaster, how, how would you phrase it uh, in an elevator length? 
It's way harder than I expected it to be, way more work than it should have been, and uh, Justin was way more of a dick than I know him to be. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you give me an example, he says, with his arms, uh, his, his palms rubbing on each other? Ah. Uh. Jeez, I don't know. I mean, he told more than once he said that he would have sent me home. Showed him. But That's... it was uh it was brutal. Um, you know, this is the first time that I think uh we've actually had any kind of uh, uh extended chat, but you did one of the one of the best shows in both seasons. There's now but two seasons of America's Next Stop podcast. Probably my favorite submission ever. You guys, uh, your team did and you were the voice of uh, which was culinary capers. Culinary capers. Uh, which was a a retelling of like this great, like Fargo dumb criminal <laughs> ass story, but involving food. It was basically a true crime story. It was but, the great Canadian maple syrup heist. That was it. But all but but the theory, the idea yeah. of the show would be that all the true crime would involve food on some level, which I thought was a brilliant show. I hope you guys eventually uh, 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 do it. But uh, uh, let's talk about the show that you guys are doing now. Uh, tell us about Ake Willow. So Ake Willow is sort of a storytelling podcast. It's almost like a serialized audiobook, And it's the story of Miriam Dufour, a young French Canadian woman who her life has completely crumbled to bits. And out of the blue, she gets this envelope um, saying that she has this, you know, long lost relative that she didn't know about in this town called Aquilo that she has never heard of and that she's inherited a cafe. And so she goes to this tiny little town, which is on the border between the U.S. and Canada on the border. The border runs right through it. And. She's going to, she figures, well, I can go there, I can sell this cafe, and maybe I can start getting my life back on track. And when she gets there, she finds out that things are not quite what she was expecting them to be. Uh, so so this is a narrative podcast, and of course it is written by J.F. Dubow, somebody that has uh, uh, been around our community for a while. Uh, uh, J.F., where did you get this idea? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh. Here, JF. JF might be muted. Yeah, we're not seeing uh, any audio come from you, JF. We could describe like how he's emoting, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's being very thoughtful. <laughs> he's being very poignant. Uh, yeah, he's got well, a lot that, of sharp that, ideas. Yeah, it meant a lot to him. Yeah. It's, uh, man, do I hate technology. There's no <laughs> word for that. Than having people talk about the fact that you can't talk on the internet. And now, JF, I mean, as somebody who has written about dystopic worlds and horror, uh, this is truly his greatest creation, is the one he has put himself into, uh, uh, as we are still unable to hear him. JF, can you... Uh, no, not... So I've been uh, podcasting with him for about five years now, and I can tell you this is... Yeah, you get used to this. It's cool. <laughs> Par for the course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell. I'll tell you what. Maybe. Maybe we should ease into a game, and then when JF uh, manifests himself, uh, it'll be for dramatic effect. That sounds great. Hey, uh, Bryce, uh, uh, what is our game this week? Hey, we got a game from uh, a, a golf house who's actually here. He's he's off camera, but he uh, and a buddy are actually sitting in here in studio in Austin. Uh, he came up with this game uh, that uh, – did, did he have a name for it? What, uh, did you have a name for it? I don't think no. so. He said no. Uh, but but uh, basically, he went on to r slash ask Reddit, uh, which is the Reddit where you uh, ask things, and found a thread of people answering the question, uh, what is the dumbest thing that you thought – as a child. So we all have like dumb thoughts as a kid. What are some of the, some of the thumb, dumb thoughts that uh, you all have thought? Like, like, let's start with Brian. We'll go clockwise here. Give, give JF a, a am, few more. Am I still ruining the show? Oh, there hey! he is. Whoa. <laughs> JF is, oh, JF God. is here. All right. So, so dumb, dumb things you believed as a child, Brian. Um, man, I, I, unfortunately, the only thing that springs immediately to mind is, uh, uh, when I was in sixth grade, I thought I had discovered the power of time travel. I, uh, I, I realized like, oh my God, I'm going to time travel 10 seconds in the future and I'll arrive there with all my memories. And so I was like, and go to 
three, four, five. And then I landed and it was, it was 10 seconds later. I was like, oh my God, I have the power of time travel. And I remember thinking in sixth grade in West Memorial Junior High, I'm going to teleport to 90 years old right before I die. And then I'm waiting to get there. And so for some reason, like I'm actively living my life to please the idle wish of a sixth grader who had the thought that he could time travel. You'll get there. Yeah. Eventually. Uh, or some part of me. I will say this, and this is something that I took, I mean, an, an embarrassingly long way into my life before I realized that it wasn't real. But when I was a child, my mom, whenever she would make bacon, would always put the bacon grease in pickle jars because we would eat pickles, empty the pickle jars. She would empty the grease in there because... I guess you don't want to put the grease down into the pipe because it hardens in the pipe and it can screw screw up your pipes or whatever, right? In my mind, until I was like 19 or 20 years old, I just assumed, I just conflated pickle brine with something you couldn't pour down the sink because it would hurt the pipes. So I was well into college by the time that I was like, man, I just like, I, I I brought it up to my mom at some point. Like, yeah, I don't know. I guess people just throw away full jars of pickle juice, like, or they're screwing up their pipes, something awful. And she was like, no, that was bacon grease. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm just a fucking idiot then, aren't I? Uh, now that you mention it, I do remember something that's a little bit more on brand for the subreddit. I remember being in second grade and seeing my First, it was right around the time they were advertising long distance companies and they were advertising MCI as a long distance carrier. And, uh, you know, the letters MCI were there. And then there was this line that came out of the M and then hit a hard right angle and went off to the right. And I asked my dad, like, why is that line coming out of the top of the M on MCI and going off to the right? And dad said, like, oh, logo. And what he meant was that's their logo, that's their insignia, that's the way that they're branding to be remembered in the future. Unfortunately, at the time, I was taking logo as a programming class on Apple II Pluses <laughs> in second grade. So I assumed like, oh, yeah, that's right. So pin up, uh, pin down, go up 10 units, right 90 degrees and go off to the side. And somehow I got it in my head that when my dad said logo, what he meant was somebody was using logo, therefore that line must have been a mistake that somebody dicking around with logo made <laughs> on a national <laughs> commercial. And, uh, and I held on to that for uh, like three or four years before I realized, oh, no, wait, a logo is a thing. And, I'm, and then I was dumb. That's hilarious. I got, I got a bit of a slightly gross one if you guys are up. To oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when I was really young, probably like four or five, I, I kind of noticed the fact that it, when I drank liquid, I also peed liquid. But when I ate solid, obviously I excreted solid, but they came in in one form and went out the same form from different orifices. So I figured it was a separate system that handled liquids and solids. It's only later than when I was just eating soup and realized, wait, I'm consuming both at once. This is going to clog something panicked and started asking questions <laughs> so, so sorry which which food had you panicked just soup because soup has like you've got the liquid and then you've got like i don't know carrots and noodles and all sorts of bullshit in there i figured what sorts of this where where does this get put into which system and that's the only one i got curious about wait no none of this can be right <laughs> that's the digestion lot. remained a mystery until i was about six <laughs> uh, all right, Amy, bring us home. Uh, I don't, I don't know that I have one because I was, I was a very precocious child, and uh, both of my parents worked in TV, Smarter and yeah, and I, I <laughs> used to, uh, their shifts used to overlap by an hour on Sundays. My mom worked midnights, and my dad worked days, so I like grew up in a TV studio, and that was weird to me that like other people didn't. So like the little boy that lived down the street, like I couldn't understand why he didn't want to play Master Control with me. And like, we're gonna just, you know, <laughs> we we're gonna put TV on the air. It was gonna be great, guys. I don't know why you don't want to play. That is hilarious. All right, uh, Bryce, what is our game? 
Uh, so so uh, uh, Golf House has, has gone through this Ask Reddit thread and pulled some of the answers that other people have said and blanked out part of their response. So, so, so for example, and this one, this one actually is very close to uh, JF's, uh, if I gave you that if you drink while peeing, you'll blank. Uh, your job as teams, we're going to have Team Brian and Justin versus Team uh, uh, JF and Amy. Uh, try to fill in the blank, and then science will tell us uh, what the closest one. So if I gave you that, if you quote that, if you st drink while peeing, you will blank. Uh, I, I would I would say pass out or faint. That would be my guess. Yeah, the first thing that popped into my mind was suffocate. Okay. Like I, I don't know why. Um, Morbid. Drink while peeing. You would. And this is the example. Seems like so that would be to. a good thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's say pass out. Yeah, pass out. Right. Uh, team Team Jamie, what do you think? I, I think you you pee oh, forever. Yeah. Like it just never stops. Yeah. It's just I'm, I'm thinking, I'm going back to Brian's thing about time travel. You just create a loop and just never <laughs> ends. You just become a fountain. You're the mannequin piss. Wow, okay. yeah. So you would have to stop drinking to stop peeing. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. this is it. This is your life. You're peeing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's I mean, a good answer. In fact, that is almost exactly what Randall X said, that if you drink while peeing, you'll keep drinking until you stop peeing. Correct the mundo. <laughs> Hell. Here we go. So, oh, all right. Easy game. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, 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 Aquilo available now on all podcasting platforms. <laughs> Fantastic show. You guys are gonna get smoked. All right. And and by the, I'm just. Gonna... I, I don't know. I think like a child. So uh, <laughs> you got this, Amy. This time I am gonna send you home. I'm just okay. gonna let you know right. right. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let's start with this one. Okay. Here we go. Uh, we're gonna start with Team BJ. Quote. I thought a lawsuit was blank. I thought a lawsuit was blank. Where's my? I thought a lawsuit was blank. Who starts? Who uh, starts? Here? Team Team Brian Justin BJ. Oh, dude, it's got to be like uh, the robes that you wear uh, oh, to oh, impress. Oh, yeah, it was the judge's robes. Yeah, that's yeah. a lawsuit. A lawsuit. Hell yeah, I'm with that. Okay, they're Bung gonna say mm -hmm. judge's robes. All right, JF and Amy. What do you say? Uh, I thought a lawsuit what, what you, was blank. What are you thinking? Be, I mean, like, I, I, it's gotta be the suit you wear to court, right? Because you gotta dress up and look nice when you go to court. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking is the lawyer suit, like really just a trippy suit, like with the, 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 the tie and, and the, and the and jacket and everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I think they're going too far with the judge thing. No. So you, so you would say it would be like, like what legal paper is? There's a le there's legal paper yeah. and then there's a yeah, law. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, precisely. And like your dad goes to the office, puts on like his tie and his jacket. He's wearing his uh, his legal suit. Nice. Mm. All right. All right. Uh, the answer that we were looking for this is from Machine Code eighty six. I thought a lawsuit was something you wore to court. That's right. That's right. We're gonna give that to Team Jamie. Are you sure it's science? Uh, mean... Science is pretty clear about that one. I think. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. I, look, science get them next time, no. buddy. It's okay. The U, the U is a little ambiguous. I, I would have assumed that there might be a little more science on that, but that's fine. Okay, I guess we're. I guess we're gonna. I guess we're saving the science. You can't get all the science out on the first question. Sometimes science knows that the real science needs to wait till the end of the second act. Sometimes the bit comes a little later in the game, and that the science machine I takes a lot of work. We had rations on the science. But <laughs> That's all, so. all right. That's science. That's science. All right. Part of me wants this to be like, oh, we we both get the point, but then I'm looking at Amy and Justin's rivalry, and that's not gonna happen. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Hey, look. Yeah, yeah. Look. You, you, you can't science a sciencer, I guess. Uh, uh, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Question two. All right. Question two. Uh, uh, here we go. We're gonna start with Team JF and Amy. I thought that albino people blank. Ooh. I thought that albino people burst in blank. to flames under the no, sun. Just, no, never went outside. They just never went outside. Don't exist. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm thinking from Michael. somewhere snowy. I mean, that's that's camouflage. <laughs> right. Go ahead, you pick something. 
Oh, damn. Really, you're putting this on me? I sure All am. All right. What would my dumb brain think at six year old? I thought that albino people, <sighs> blank, were a myth. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with that. All right. Thought albino people were a myth. Brian and Jerbs. So I have something from my gut, Brian. I'm going to pitch it to you, but I assume you would have a better idea. Uh, you know what? Hold on. I'm holding up an envelope to my head. In it, it says the answer to what Justin is thinking, which is no, Justin. It's not. They deserved it. God <laughs> almighty. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. Were we not on the same page? I, I apologize. <laughs> oh, no. Um. I was gonna say we're always cold. Yes, sorry. Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, now that I open it, that's the problem. Is like uh, when you open it, when when you just say it without opening it. I should have opened it. Yes, they're always cold. I mean, all right. Do we want to go with that one, or do we want to yeah, go? With that? Uh, right. Man, look, Justin. There is a wide and open field of landmines waiting for us if we want to say anything other than. <laughs> They were cold. Albinos, as a kid, what a goofy jape that people would think they were cold. Very chilly, right? They look like you would always want to give them a coat. Yes. Yes. Look, man, I saw I saw uh, uh, Powder, uh, and, and I was not obsessed with the director's clear intent to molest children. I was mainly thinking, how cold is Powder? Every scene. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, yeah, but... Google the director of powder. Uh, not a nice guy, and we're moving on. Um, uh, uh, but beyond that, should we switch into superpowers? All of that had superpowers? If, I mean, because I, I, I hadn't really wrapped my head around with powers. Let's just stick with cold and be thankful <laughs> that's as far as it went. Cold, okay. But for the record, in <laughs> Brian was trying to avoid trouble. He just casually skidded by child molester. Like, as he's trying to exit his way out of the china shop, he just decides to take a real loo around that one. I mean, look, uh, I may be the only person on this panel who actually saw Powder in the theater. And let me tell you, I was made uncomfortable without knowing the allegations associated with the director right. of Powder. All right, and <laughs> science did all of its calculations here. Uh, the, the answer given from Chemilexis uh, said, I thought that albino people came from Albania. Came from Albania. <laughs> That's I, pretty good. That makes sense. And I believe we're going to give it to Team BJ because Albania is probably a little cold. It's probably cold. Yeah. yeah. All right. This game is one, two, That's one. Generous. We're in Albania. <laughs> Very generous. All right. We're going to start with uh, Team uh, JF and Amy for this one. Uh, quote, that if April was a month, blank must also be a month. That if April was a month, blank must also be a month. Ooh. That if April was a month, blank must also be a month. I, Man. All I can think is like April. <laughs> That's kind of where I was by April, April. April, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, cause I went, I went O'Neill because, you know, I grew up in the eighties, <laughs> so April yeah, O'Neill right. obviously I, is where we're at, but, uh, where you're going. I'm kind of okay with Beeprol, which is terrible, I'm, but I'm not, but it's the only thing I've got. I've got an answer. Yeah. yeah. Let's go with it. It's fine. I'm there. Yeah. I'm there for Beeprol. Beeprol. All right. Brian and yep. Justin, uh, I if, got if April was a month, blank must also be a month. Nailed it on this one, Bri. What you, what you got? Gorilla Timber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm I'm almost with you. Um, I want him to get the point. I, I do, too. I would yeah. say, like, Chimperl or Mandrill Pull or... Capuchin. Mandrill Pull? Yeah, cap Capuchin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Capuchimber, right? Yeah, uh, the cold months in <laughs> Sasquatch October or uh, Only in Canada. That's only in Canada. Yeah. I mean, I think science will pretty much award us any kind of uh, 
uh, any kind of ape or monkey related uh, uh, month that we can put to. I mean, we could always go with Haram May. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I feel really bad. Uh, there's a section of Animal Kingdom that uh, is called Harambe Pork oh. or something, and yes, it's just the word Harambe is everywhere. Yes, Animal. Yes, that's in there. I just took pictures next to T Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to say something chimp related or, or, or ape related. Uh, we, we can take your original answer of Gorilla Timber. Yes, Gorilla Timber. Took, it yeah. did take me a minute to decide which gorilla you meant, but I think we got there. Uh, and science appreciates that. <laughs> All right, this is a post from Steak and Nihilism seven days ago. That if April was a month, Ninja Turtles must also be a month. Oh, Ninja Turtles. Oh, man. You almost had it. Oh, almost almost did have it, but slipped through our fingers. Uh, and now, and now we leave it up to science. Yeah. Sure. Let me. Oh, sorry. Let me. Let me turn on the. This is like all my dreams. <laughs> okay, I'm really I got little... impressed by the technology you have in that studio, Brian. We have the space for it all now, is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, science is avoiding that point to Team Brian and Justin for having an Hey-o! animal. Ah! By the way, Brian, you realize that you are closer than you have ever been in your life to the moment where your business is going to get big enough that you're going to have to have a secretary. And that means you're going to have to have some branded phone stuff, some uh, custom hold music. And that hold music is almost certainly just going to be science beeping and booping. Forever. <laughs> 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 Actually, I believe that'll be the phone ring sound. <laughs> We're going to miss a lot of calls. <laughs> uh, the, the newspaper bullpens where the phones are right <laughs> off the hook or <laughs> the wolf of wall street from a hedge fund like the calls just keep coming in instead of ringing it's just beep, boop, 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 boop. yeah no the hold music is definitely boodle deedle do i mean come on of course bye 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 beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to see if we can license out science's uh, industry standard sounds. All right. Hey, by the way, two to one. Two, two to one. one. Mm -hmm. Two to one. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And we're going to start with Brian and Justin Fine. on this Fine. next one. Uh, here we Oh, here we go. Uh, this person wrote, I heard the phrase feel the burn when lifting weights to gain muscle. So I thought that if I blanked, I would gain muscle fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I heard the phrase "feel the burn" when lifting muscle, when lifting weight to gain muscles, I thought that if I blank, I would gain muscle fast. I would say like hurt his arms, like like in, like 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 rubbed himself painfully on on the muscle bits, like Indian burn, like he Indian yeah Native American burn. Is yeah, that yeah? Uh, Twenty. Where are we at? That two thousand twenty. No, no, I'm talking about the famous uh, uh, Bombay Indian. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. It's very no, no, I, I, I'm going to say that that legitimately, like um, uh, the, the idea burn. that that okay, if if feeling the burn causes you know muscle growth, then maybe just rubbing your muscles until they hurt gotcha. would yeah. do the same thing. I'm with you. Okay, let's lock it in. Rubbing your muscles until they hurt, says Team Brian yes. and Justin. Uh, Team JF and Amy, what are you thinking? Uh, working out when it's hot, just setting yourself on fire. No, I, my, I was going to say, like, want. get a sunburn. Yeah. That was where I was. Oh. oh yeah. Oh. oh, which would explain every California right, set right? Movie like every that begins with a montage of oiled men working out on the beach. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I, know, I need to look up these California yeah. movies. I guess. <laughs> yeah, Must be I... over there. I may have just revealed something about myself. That's fine. It's uh, okay. Yeah. It's just the internet, right? You like to watch gladiator movies, too? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we get a final answer then? What Amy says. What did I say? Get a sunburn? Sunburn. Yeah. Sunburn. Yeah. Sunburn. Yeah. sunburn. All right. There we go. One of our uh, fantastic mods here on twitch.tv slash night attack sunburn. Uh, because I heard that feel the. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is from Desert Hunter 18. Desert Hunter 18 writes. 
Uh, because I heard the phrase, feel the burn when lifting weights to gain muscle, I thought that if I turned the shower on really hot and flexed under it, I would gain muscle fast since it burned. I thought I found a life hack. <laughs> All right, we're getting beep, 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 beep. Uh, quick science on that one. That one's going to JF and Amy. JF and Amy. Nice. Wow. Well done. Thank well, you, well, science. Very Thank quick you, science. Thank you, science. Sometimes science is more art than science. That's, that's right. That's right. That's a classic I quote. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we're going to start with JF and Amy on this one. <laughs> For the longest time, I didn't realize that the penis goes in the vagina. I assumed it was blank. <laughs> For the longest time, I didn't realize I it was that the blank? penis goes in the vagina. Uh, vagina. I assumed it was Explain. blank. Jay, uh, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, the other way around? I don't know. I. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Who goes first here? Uh, team uh, JF and, and Amy will. Oh, good. <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> I have, thank you. I, I I wish I knew if the poster was a boy or girl because then like did he just assume everyone had a penis and just docking all the time or? It's hmm. a good point. Oh, I can I give don't... you. Uh, I can give you the name. Of, how about I, I can give you the username? That feels that feels pretty sure. Pretty sure. easy. Oh He's, yeah, that uh, posted. Seven Solid. days ago, 696 points. That's a nice and a half. Sugar Cube Ryan posted this. Sugar Cube Ryan. For the longest right. time, I didn't realize that the penis goes in the vagina. I assumed it was blank. Man. I don't even know. I, f I feel this is your specialty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Are you wrong? <laughs> um, man. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this was a myth. I don't know. What do you think? Tell me anything, because I have nothing. I don't I can't know, O'Neal my way out like, of this one. Much, yeah, much like you were precocious about like the workings of radio design, I was pretty precocious about that. Um, <laughs> the knowledge, like I had a book. <laughs> God, I don't. Of course, I we all have know. books. We love books. Like, <laughs> we all had books. For the longest time, I didn't realize Very that literal. the penis goes in the vagina. I assumed it was blank. We're going to need an answer, folks. Um, A myth. A myth. All right. There you go. I got nothing. So yeah, Brian and Justin. Uh, I, I, I don't know that I have the right phrasing on this, but I can confess to this actual thought having occurred to me until I, I believe until I saw my first porno tape uh VHS that uh, was allegedly a copy of mannequin uh but turned out not to be um it was man <laughs> I can <laughs> so so the um uh, uh specifically like I as a child five or six years old read the you know how where did I come from baby book or whatever and 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 yes it depicted the idea of sperm entering an egg and all that stuff but I thought that was happening at a microscopic level that that nobody could see. So in my mind, just the rubbing of the body parts was like magic and essentially uh, uh, much like getting an illness or whatever at a level, microscopic, le microscopic level that nobody could see, you know, everything was transferring. Um, it wasn't until... Peter North uh, elucidated me with in graphic detail, uh, in voluminous detail, yeah. that there was a gelatinous mass for that gelatinous <laughs> ass uh, that I suddenly realized, uh, oh, wait, there, no, that's an actual sploosh. Um, <clears throat> so I want to say it's some variation of that idea because I can't be the only one to have it. So I'm going to say I, not, I would assume it was in contact, just rubbing together. Yeah, yeah, right? Okay, there we go. All right, I'm with it. Yeah, let's do it. Assumed it was just rubbing. All right, there we go. That was from Sugar Cube Ryan seven days ago. For the longest time, I didn't realize that the penis goes in the vagina. I assumed it was more of a hot dog and bun situation. I also thought that the sweat from the penis that got, it was the sweat that got a girl pregnant. I was so confident of this that I told all my school friends how stupid they were for making hand signals that they used to describe sex. Ryan and Justin, that is almost an exact. That was terrifying. An on, exact man. guess. Three to two. Good right? Game. Right? Wow. Okay, good. Good. Wow, wow, wow. 
Hot dog in buns <laughs> in the scenario. It's an amazing idea. And also just, I mean, I guess you just make small talk. Imagine if you <laughs> did it on the first date. You'd have even, I mean, like, like how awkward would that be? Just laying there. We, we've talked about the um, uh, Mormon college student phenomenon of uh, the bubbles. called soaking. Soaking. Oh, soaking. So oh, soaking. 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 Where, where it's like the idea is it's possible to do it so slow that not even God can see it. Yeah. <laughs> where it's like <laughs> you sort of go in, hang out, and oh golly, you both orgasmed and then you slip out and not even God was able to see it. So, yeah, is yeah. It the, is it that God doesn't see it or he just gets bored halfway through and chases <laughs> it? Right, he it. goes back to Mormon porn with the bubbles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. God... Uh, whose meat vision is much like a T-Rex. <laughs> like he, 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 oh, I know what my new superpower was. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you go really slow, you're know, none the wiser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a few more here. We're going to start with you, Brian and oh, Justin, on this one. Yep. Uh, this is from Trenton J. I didn't understand the concept of killing an animal for food, but always heard that burgers, quote, come from cows. So I assume that burgers were blank. Cow poop. Yeah, some version of cow poop. That they, yeah, and that we are just eating cow poop and it's normalized. Like they're, they're like, oh my god, I'm too fat. Let me let me poop out some of my own meat. <laughs> oh wait, also you know where there's tons of this? Fucking L.A. Am I right? Hollywood people. <laughs> and they're they all could, fakers, they So you know, yeah. Yeah, come on. All right, so there we go. Cow byproduct. Okay. Rob Lowe. <laughs> Jay and Why? Amy. So, so they, they went scout, scatological, which is where I wanted to go. No, um, I, I'm going to say actually we, made by cows. Yeah, it's their that's, actual that's, meat coming out. <laughs> no, I, I think actually but, made by cows. Yeah, that's, I mean, there were, there were two options. There's scatological or carnological. <laughs> I guess, um, <laughs> or cartoon. And yeah. I, I think, like, yeah, the cartoon if version comes from cow. Chocolate, cow if, this... if grown adults can think chocolate milk comes from brown cows, then I am willing to accept that cows can make burgers, like, physically. Yeah, they, they like fabricate Spongebob. and they fabricate and deliver it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there. The, Made the, the specifics are. By cows. Irrelevant. By cows. Yeah. yeah. By cows. Yeah. Gotcha. As from Trenton J, seven days ago, 72 points. I didn't understand the concept of killing an animal for food, but always heard that burgers, quote, come from cows. So I assumed that burgers were literal cow shit. And I still <sighs> ate them because, well, <laughs> if everyone else eats them, then surely it's fine. Uh, yeah. Kids are all uh, about poop. We nailed it. Sorry, Gary Larson. It wasn't a <laughs> bunch of cows on hind legs cooking themselves. <laughs> All right, the score is four to two in our last round, and uh oh, it's for uh, three points. Three point final round. Oh, damn it. Oh, here we what go. A coincidence. So it's still anybody's <laughs> game. All right, here's one. This one. Here's one. <laughs> <laughs> you inspire confidence, wow. my friend. I knew that b babies normally came out of vaginas. But my partially deaf friend didn't. He told me he was born out of his mom's butt. For the longest time, I thought blank. We're going to start with uh, JF and Amy on this one. I knew babies normally came out of vaginas, but my partially deaf friend didn't. He told me he was born out of his mom's butt. For a long time, I thought that blank. That's why he was partially deaf? I mean, why else is that detail in there? Because you're not mishearing vagina and hearing butt. You're just not. No. I'm. Yeah, thinking... no, I'm with you. Yep. I'm, I'll go yeah, with you on this it's... one. I mean, it's terrible. This has but reminded kids are me the of worst, the thing so... I did remember that I did believe when I was a child, though. Wait, you said you didn't have any. I know, and I didn't remember it until just now, which was because I knew that the mother's, the mother's muscles were what pushed it out. And I thought they came out, like forward, like through the front. And that was how babies were born. So I asked my mother, like, what do stitches feel like? 
And she said, I don't know. I've never had them. And I couldn't figure that out at all because clearly it was some sort of alien scenario <laughs> in which they come <laughs> bursting forth through the front. Oh. It's like God consulted Ridley Scott when he decided on how yeah. babies were going to be born. Yeah. Right. Can we create a new RSS feed <laughs> just titled Out of Context Night Attack Guest Quotes? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. pretty good. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, no, I'm with you. That's well, why. That's for a why long time, I thought that what? what? What's your final answer here? That you said, the, yeah, that he that the reason the friend was partially deaf was because it came out of the other hole. This is the worst thing I've ever said in my life. It's not. No. Unfortunately, no, like I, not. I feel like my my gut reaction. <laughs> You guys might have already said in a different way. I was thinking like some version of there are two types of babies. Um, uh, Justin, do you have something that every that, baby is unique? Really, I, I don't want to. I don't know if I want to go back to the well. But my first thought was that his friend was a sentient piece of shit. <laughs> um, I, 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 I would, so many of my friends. I like, would advise like, us like, as a team to not go there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I look. I, number one, the last it was poop answer uh, <laughs> brought us to this this point, the, the the cusp of victory. So I don't think it's a bad guess, but on some level, we're all just dancing around different versions of this kid thinking that his friend's disability came from <laughs> like being born out of his mom's butt. <laughs> I wish there was more details about like how does somebody say like no. I understand all you vagina dwellers are real, <laughs> but not me. I came from the butt. I'm an ass man. <laughs> I'm an ass man. <laughs> what? So, sorry, dweebs. Uh, uh, us butt <laughs> friends will be here ruling the school. <laughs> um, what else do we have, Justin? Oh, God, Brian, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, oh, how about this? That, that's why he had brown eyes. Sure. Roll with that. Best we can do. Yeah. Safest we can do. Pouring out the butt, brown eyed, till the day they die. All right. A little bit of pink around the iris. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to plug these into but the People sinks. versus Vagina People sounds like it should be like a West Side Story, ty story type musical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I feel like we've already spent so much time on this, I don't even want to build out that world. <laughs> All right, here, I'm going to plug this into the science machine. As long as you can. Keep showing John Stossel's at me. That's exhausting. Okay, uh, that's the right amount of dings to hear to know that it's complete. Oh, it looks like... <laughs> Somebody is exactly correct, the mundo. Someone is exactly correct, the mundo. This is from Abigail Lilac. I knew that babies normally came out of vaginas, but my partially deaf friend didn't. He told me he was born out of his mom's butt. For a long time, I thought that people with disabilities accidentally came out of butts instead of vaginas, <laughs> and that's how they got their disabilities. With five points, congratulations to Team J. Up and Amy. Woo! I'm embarrassed to have won. <laughs> oh man, get ready for when we buy all the pop up ads congratulating you guys. There we go. Good. Yes. The, uh, I, I again watch Amy Frost uh, celebrate a victory on a show that I host. Uh, <laughs> just uh, uh, amazing, amazing showing by you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what, you are welcome to hang around as we go further into the show, but. Let's remind everybody one more time, uh, give us the, the elevator pitch for Ake Willow. Ake Willow, a story about demons and baking. Uh, listen to it anywhere where you get your podcasts. That's Ake Willow, A-C-H-E-W-I-L-L-O-W. -L -L and, of course, we will talk a little bit more uh, about that uh, later in uh, the after show if you guys want to hang around. Yeah. But first, Brian, would you like to do a little diamond time? Goddamn right. And of course, as always, I will read my... Oh, no, wait. I'm on a phone. Uh, maybe you could read the thing. Don't worry, Brian. Diamond Time is where you can shout out your projects right here on the show. Just go to reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit 
dot com. Uh, by the way, I see only two posts here. So as I am reading, if somebody wants to post literally whatever they want, they're going to get it right on the show here. We begin, though, with the Fisk. The Fisk says, hey, Diamond Club, I'm an independent one man game developer in my spare time in the UK, and I just released a new game on the Google Play Store. It's a Flappy Bird type game, but filled with unicorns and rainbows. It would mean the world to me if you checked it out. It's free and contains no ads. You can go to bit.ly slash unicorn game swag to download it now. P.S. If those are interested in the whole game, it is built on web tech, a web developer tool, and then shipped to Android. Hopefully you can't tell. And it is called Unicorn Run. Uh, our next one is Mr. Casey James Diamond Club. I made a new website during Christmas break for the movie reviews. I see a lot of movies and felt reviews were too wordy when I just wanted to know if something was worth seeing. The, these are three ratings. Theater worthy, home worthy, home worthy, not worthy. Please check out the site and leave your own votes. No account sign up is required. It is simple movie dot reviews. Uh, and then he went on to say, uh, uh, feel free to throw me any feedback, but this is a pretty clean looking website. Look at that. Hells yeah. Uh, and we'll see if anybody else uh, squeezed anything here. Uh, you want to know what? I'll read all three that came in while we were reading. Uh, Butts Again by Hot Beverages. <laughs> Beef Viper, I Like Boobs. And The Buck R.I. Go Listen to Aquilo, fuckos. Those, of course, are the kinds of messages that you get when you sign up. <laughs> For our diamond time that you can get to at reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamond club dot reddit dot com. But of course, that brings us into our movie draft minute. Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by Cosmic Radio TV for the week of January 13th, 2020. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. All right. So last week we had a little bit of a glitch of the software, but all that's cleared up. So you know what? Let's just forget last week never happened. And let's read the totals right now. Brian Brushwick is in sixth by $204.5 million. Jane Josephine is in fifth by $374.4 million. Brett Roundsville is in fourth by $407.5 million. Lily League Mike is in third by $452.7 million. John Teasdale is in second by $581.1 million. And in first by $603.6 million. It's Tom Merritt. And that is your Movie Drive Minute for the week of January 13th, 2020. Holy crap, all the planet and Justin Robert Young. Uh, did we ever foresee that Brett Rounceville would be not second place in this scenario? I mean, I don't, he, he might not overtake Movie League Mike at this point. Nope. Um, hey, so about that. Star Wars movie. J.F. Dubow, what do you publicly want to say about it? Uh, about Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to having the time to go see it. I hear both <laughs> good and bad things. Um, what I've read so far makes me think I will probably not enjoy it as much for the story as I will for the special effects and acting. But I'm willing to be proven wrong when I get my ass to a theater. Amy F. Frost, uh, uh, do you have do you have st uh, Star Wars thoughts? I'm I'm more of a I'm more of a Star Star Wars mythology person rather than any of the execution. So like when people talk to me about Star Wars and like, hey, so like here's the world and like here's all this mythology behind it, and I'm like, hey, that's cool. And then I watch Star Star Wars and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of loud, isn't it? Oh man, ah, <laughs> uh, it's just. It's just a little loud. Yeah, I I think I'm way more excited about the the fact that they announced more animated series for Star mm -hmm. Wars because Rebels was rad and the last few seasons of Clone Wars were were rad. So I want to see more of that. And the movies, movies are fine. They're fine. They're fine. Uh, uh, Brian, did you uh, see on vacation that uh, there was a big kerfuffle about allegedly what is the script for the movie before Carrie Fisher died, but also before it was rewritten by J.J. Abrams? Yeah, dude. Uh, word on the street, as I read it on my Google News feed, was that it was three and a half hours long and that uh, it was fairly different. Fairly different. There was no podcasting. Former emperors nope. resurrected from the <laughs> dead. No purple mattresses, no Squarespaces, no, uh, no, no, no uh, domain.coms. 
Ugh. Yeah, it, it seemed more like a, and this is a novel idea, an actual sequel to the movie that came before it. Like that, that was a bold strategy that they were initially going to employ and decided to abandon. So, uh, uh, interesting. I don't know. I, I guess these things I'm sure have been written and rewritten and rewritten. I guess that script would have had to have been rewritten since it gave Carrie Fisher, you know, lines, uh, uh, which were no longer available after soon after it was, it was, you know, dated, but, uh, I don't know. Curious stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, is there uh, is there anything else that we have here, Brian? Mailbag. I mean, we got mailbag. We got to dive Let's into do the mail. mail. Let's do the mailbag. Oh no! Wait, one more time. Uh, one more Let's time. Let's do the mailbag again. Mailbag time. Join us for drinks in the Diamond Club. In the Diamond Club. Mm, that sounds grand. Super grand. This is the part of the show where we figure out the new fixing board still and read some of your mails to mail at nightattack.tv. M A I L at nightattack.tv, including this one from Joey, aka Diamond Scoop. Hypothetical, you get $10 million, but for the rest of your life, there is a snail coming for you. And if the snail ever touches you, you die. Do you take the money? How would you defend yourself from the snail? And no, you can't just kill it. Brian, we'll start with you. Take the money, and what would you do? I mean, I, I, I'm going to guess I'm not alone in saying, where is this a hypothetical? This is quite literally the life that I've led and how I perceive it to be. Like, like, like whatever money we've made from anything we've ever done has been reinvested, knowing that eventually, uh, given my imposter syndrome, people are going to figure out that I'm a fucking broad uh -huh. and that that snail's fucking coming from me. We, so this, this is not metaphorical, hypothetical. This is more of a literal. Mm -hmm. This is more literal. I, I mean, it's literally my life. It's, it's metaphorically your life. But How much money do you get? $10 million. Okay. All right. It's like by it's it's twenty times bigger than my life. <laughs> there, there. <laughs> so, so uh, yes or no? Do you take the money? I well, mean, I already did. I can't give it back. Right, Fuck Justin. you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so ten million bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming I'm gonna. I'm willing to peel off at least one of those millions to have somebody pick the snail up and bring it to the farthest point in the ocean that it could possibly be mm. like that seems reasonable it will always be coming for me it will just be coming for me from the bottom of the ocean and it will never bother me uh so a quick google search does say that some snails have both gills and lungs so they could breathe underwater now I'm gonna see how long. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was even assuming that this was an enchanted snail. That this snail cannot be killed. That's part of the idea. So I can't kill it. It will live forever. It will just live forever, slowly making its way to me from the bottom of the ocean. That, Another, that would take yeah. that money. Yes. Another quick search seems that it would take 120 years to half circumnavigate the globe. For a snail at its five millimeter a second pace. Yeah. So boom. Nailed it. Sorry. Sorry I broke your game, bro. But <laughs> I, I like that snail's moxie. I mean nine million dollar gerbs is having the time of his goddamn life. Amy, what about you? You do it? Um, so yeah, absolutely. And not for like any Aquilo spoilers, but just circle of salt <laughs> and I'm good. No problem. You sitting down, circle of salt. All set. JF, what Sword about you? GTZ says, nailed it. Snailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> JF, Mr. Debeau? You mean I get a ton of money and I can end it whenever I want? <laughs> oh, <laughs> perfect scenario. I'm taking this. <laughs> All right. Very cool. All right. We got another letter here from Thomas. Thomas writes, hi, Brian, Neshcom, and guests. I was just wondering if any of you are superstitious. It doesn't seem likely to me that Justin or Brian would be considering the whole skeptic thing, but maybe I'm wrong. How about you, Bryce? As for myself, I'm not too su superstitious, but I do refrain from saying anything bad about my car while I'm sitting in it for fear that it will get sad and stop running. Maybe that's less superstitious <laughs> and more just OCD and weird. Anyway, just wondering that and thought I would ask. Really enjoying the show, and I'll keep watching Thomas from Missouri. Superstitions. 
Go. Total confession. Super, super duper, super superstitious. Yep. Uh, and 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 the the final nail in the coffin. Like there was me flirting with the idea of being flamboyant in being anti-superstitious or whatever, but there was a friend that I looked in the eyes or, or I don't know, I talked to him on the phone and I said, I swear on my family, we will see you at Thanksgiving. And we didn't see him at Thanksgiving. And your family died two weeks later, my dog got run over by a truck. (gasps) And all of a sudden it occurred to me that doesn't matter if there's any kind of correlation, doesn't matter if there's any kind of causality, that that baggage in the back of my mind, I don't ever want to experience again. And I full on embrace the superstition at this point. Ooh, Justin. Um, man, I, I, I can't think of any superstitions that, that I, I specifically adhere to. But I will say that I do wind up doing superstitious like things. I wind up adhering to things because I do think that like tradition matters, that I should be like it will make me happier if I do things a certain way or if I don't say a certain thing at a certain time. So I guess I've I have super annoying rationalizations around superstition would probably be my my answer. Uh, Amy, what about you? Uh, so I, I live in New England, and you don't grow up in New England, especially as a girl, I think, uh, without being at least a little witchy, right? Like, that's just a thing. And so there's a lot of, I don't know if they're necessarily superstitions, but they kind of are built in. But there's a lot of rituals also that you just sort of do. And so, like, if you knock over the salt, you throw a pinch over your shoulder because it it's not going to hurt anything. And so, I mean, better safe than sorry, right? So I do a lot of those kind of little ritually things. JF, I, f- I think I'm like on Amy's side. Like I'm not superstitious in the way that I believe in many superstitions, but usually the demands are so small. Like don't walk under uh, like a ladder. It's like all of it is so easy to do that even if the chances are infinitesimally small, it like whatever like i'll i'll go around the ladder i'll sort of pinch the salt i'll pet the black cat whatever like i'm not gonna i might as well act as if i'm superstitious just in case Mm. Mm. uh i am i'm a little superstitious on i try not to say good luck very much i'll say break a leg um i (laughs) it's well documented on on the set when we shoot stuff uh, that uh, I don't like it when people jinx us by saying a shoot will be easy. <laughs> you are not I, specifically, if I could call you out here. Uh, Jason Murphy has a habit of of like getting to a point of announcing like, okay, we're gonna do blank, 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 and blank. It's a really simple build. I'm figuring maybe 15 minutes. At which point, from behind me, I hear. Uh-uh. <laughs> every single time because <laughs> that's when it turns out to be you know all day things and so um i i have i have little superstitions like that um uh the they're, they're, they're not major but i for like for whatever reason i just i especially the good luck not saying good luck and instead saying like break a leg um just for no reason like i don't i don't adhere to the like Mac, the Macbeth thing but uh yeah break a leg well, I, if, if to I don't know to pontificate just a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think what we want to avoid is any sense of guilt if things don't go according to plan. Like I know, like ever since the dog thing, it's not that I believe there's any kind of causality between me saying a thing and a member of my family getting injured or whatever. But I am a hundred percent certain that that the moment you say a certain thing, it opens a window. And if somebody in your family gets hurt, like you're going to have to live and think about that correlation for however many years, possibly the rest of your life. And so to me, it's it's an out to prevent uh, from having to, I don't know, unpack a bunch of psychological guilt down the way. Uh, so thank you for that letter, Thomas, and everybody who sits in uh, emails to mail at nightattack.tv. Uh, that's the email address where we read your letters here at the mailbag section of the show at the end of the show, which is what this is, which is the end of the show. Heck yeah, dude. Uh, hey, Justin, what did we learn? 
Well, Brian, we learned that I'm going to put that snail so far in the goddamn ocean, he ain't never going to see me at all. <laughs> More importantly, we learned that podcasting from a Ford Expedition is a real thing that you could do from Orlando, Florida. We learned that John Stossel flies out of Austin International Airport. <laughs> and we learned that the fastest way to get him to stop and pay attention to you is to mention that you have his Emmy and it was given to you by Andrew Heaton. Uh, we learned that you can go ahead and get Ake Willow right now on any and all podcasting platforms. Yeah, we learned that J.F. Dubo and Amy are new bestest friends in the entire world. Who who won that game, by the way? It was them, wasn't it? I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't pay attention. I learned that I don't want to talk fine. about it. In fact, that's it. The show is over. <laughs> <laughs> Die in a fire. We'll see you next Tuesday. Also, congratulations to our the Bit Boss. Scoop Gray with 1,750 bits. Hells to the air. Night attack. 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 I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>